Hello everybody, uh, we're at Frencham Grey Pond this morning just doing some tench fishing. I'm here with my good friend Duncan Sharman and uh, been here since first light and to be honest it's been a little bit difficult so far but uh, we've just started getting a few bites and we've got some tench rolling out in front of us. Now we've covered tench fishing on the maggot feeder before now on the helicopter feeders which is a great tactic, one I use a lot, uh, particularly on the harder low stocked gravel pits but on a lake like this with a good stock of tench there's other tactics you can use. And so today we're looking at feeder fishing with um, ground bait feeder and a range of different baits and we're just going to take you through the, the tactics that we use and how it works. So I've got a nice fish here just resting in the landing net so we'll take a look at this one and then get the rods back out. Typical Frencham tench, hope she behaves herself. Probably, I don't know, whoop, nice. Nice fish, right side of six pound I'd say that one, great way to start the morning. So I'll slip her back and uh, hopefully we'll catch a few more and we'll have a look at the tactics we're using. One of the beauties of Frencham is you know there's always going to be plenty of tench here, even on a day like today when it's not exactly been fast and furious has it mate? No, it's a strange one, it is a bit of a temperamental water but even on a bad day you should be able to get it. A couple. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, it's interesting how many fish we've had sort of bubbling and fizzing out in front of us, um, whether they're preoccupied on stuff or whatever. But we, we started off not putting much bait out, literally just using the feeders to um, introduce a bit of bait, and um, that really didn't work. And, and you, you spotted out some ground bait, didn't you? Yeah, I took a bit of a gamble. It was like just spawn some bait out, and literally five or six, six bomb loads and the rod ripped off as I'm doing it so it just proves that that sound is more of the dinner bell ringing even on a, a, a natural venue like this where they don't hear it all the time. So. Yeah and, and sort of off the back of that I started recasting a bit more regularly. I tried to be honest I tried to put some bait out with a catty just balls of ground bait but it was, it was a fishing a bit too far and I couldn't really reach it comfortably so I thought well instead of doing that I'll just recast the feeders a bit more regularly. Uh, and the same as you, it was, uh, you know, I had a couple of fish and then the last one I had literally took the rod just as I was setting, you know, took the bait just as I was setting the bobbin straight away. So they're definitely responding to the bait going in and the splash, which... Uh, often the way, isn't it? Often the way, yeah. yeah. It's on, you know, it's um, just brought us a few extra fish on a tough morning, really. But it's been a lovely morning, I'd say. It's the, oh. the weather's <laughs> nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's Sitting out here, you can't beat it, can you? A little no. bit chilly. Autumn's on its way, isn't it? But, That's um, it, yeah. We're right at the end of August now when we're doing this, so it's it's really the end of the tench yeah, fishing. Yeah, it's probably the year, my last session here for the, till next yeah, year now. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's like all good things, you want to just do that one or two extra days, don't yeah. you? Really make the most of it. Yeah, it's uh, the tench fishing season's relatively short. I mean, you probably like me, mate, you've caught tench. I caught them in January. Yeah, yeah. all yeah. year round. You know, normally yeah. by accident, to be fair, but you can catch them all year round. But I think we're just coming to the best of it now. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, the reason we've come here this morning is um, to, to look at uh, a different kind of tactic for, for tench. Um, you may well have seen the video I've got on, on my YouTube channel about the maggot feeders and helicopter rigs, which um, on the tougher venues, the gravel pits where there isn't a massive stock of tench is. Generally, either the maggot, caster or worm approach is, is definitely the one I'll go for. But um, on the more prolific venues, I think you can you can use much wider range of tactics, really. Can't you? Yeah, I think maggot is, you know, one of the all-time tench baits. It'll work everywhere. But uh, this year on here, I've been trying to play about with a little bit. There's been a lot of small rud and perch, so the maggot approach becomes almost impossible. So I've actually been using plastic baits now, plastic corn, plastic maggots little boilies even, uh, just to, uh, you know, buy some time and get away from the small fish. Mm. And it's, it seemed to be working, but I don't think I'm there exactly. I think there's there's ways, but come next year, I'll be um, sussing it completely out. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, I, for a long time, I didn't have a great deal of confidence in plastics. And um, I think it, it was a similar kind of scenario. It was fishing at um, Johnson's Lake for the Prusians, where... Again, I was getting pestered by small fish all the time, um, and, and a lot of small tench actually, um, on corn. So I went onto onto plastic casters, and um, uh, well, it was just uh, phenomenal. The the results I had on it, really, really good. And 
the bait was always staying on, you weren't having to rebait after every fish, it made everything a little bit more efficient. And since then I've really kind of persevered with it and got a lot of confidence in it. But yeah, this morning I've been catching on boilies, I've then put rubber casters on, caught a rubber caster as well. So I don't think it's made that much difference. I think personally this morning it's it's the ground bait feeders that we've been using that the fish are homing in on more, oh, yeah. much more than the hook bait. Definitely areas out there where there's a concentration of bubbles, we're clipped up so we're dropping it there, but tench can be funny when they're actually making a lot of fizzing, they can be really difficult to catch mm. as if they're just on the ground bait. Yeah. Um, the other, you know, we, you talked about uh, bait, bread flake, fantastic. Years ago we used to use it out here, just wait for the tip to just wind round and uh, hasn't been used for years and years. And mm. you, you also spoke about plastic. Johnson's um, was where my attitude was, gotta go. <laughs> This is one of the better ones this morning, probably about five and a half pound, typical size for Frencham. And uh, I'm fishing slightly different to what Paul is. And in a few minutes what we'll do is we'll just run through the rigs to, uh, to show you exactly how to go ahead and catch a few of these. Well, before we're really <laughs> interrupted by that tench, um, I think we were talking about sort of ground baits and feeders. Baits, tactics. yeah. Baits, just, stuff like that, were we? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we've, we've, we've wound a rod in each now just to show you the sort of tactics we're using. Slightly different, doing fairly similar kind of thing, but um, just a couple of different slight variations. So yeah. what are you up to, Don't What have you got? Well, I'm, I'm using the good old helicopter rig. Of course I am. It's either this or the pellet comb with me because I'm not a great lover of flatbed feeders having to get ground bait perfect. With this I'm just using a 30 gram cage feeder. I'm putting a little bit of ground bait in there, plugging some maggots and then just like making a sandwich sort of thing with ground bait. And it's just a very short hook link about the length of my finger. As you can see, I've got a little bit of yellow corn on there. I've caught a couple on that today. We've had a couple yeah, on plastic plastic, yeah. plastic corn, um, plastic maggot. I've even had one on a plastic caster with three maggots on the hook. So you can play around with that. And really the way to work this is just to keep casting it. Don't just put it out there and go to sleep. Every sort of 20 minutes on a venue like this, get out and recast. It's amazing that goes down, hits the bottom and quite often you'll have a tench as you sink in your line. So that's my preferred method here. Yeah, and what sort of uh, breaking strain main line you got on there? Main line on here because we're casting, you know, a good distance, probably sometimes 60 yards. I've got an eight pound main line. Mm -hmm. 
the two float stops and the, the, the hook link is 594, just under six pound uh, yeah. hook link, so slightly less. So obviously yeah. that will go if you're snagged up or what yeah. have you. Yeah. And a little size 16 micro barbed super specialist. That's it. That's Don't it. need to go any bigger. Yeah. That goes in, it's not coming out. Yeah, um, mine is really fairly similar to be honest. Um, get mine out here. So I've been catching on mini boily and um, and the um, rubber casters this morning. I've opted for uh, a flat method feeder. Um, I like fishing with flat method feeders. Um, to be honest, I started off this morning. I had my rod set up um, from last night um, before coming down, so we could get cast out really without having to mess around in the sort of twilight this morning and uh, in the dark because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be um, and I was not using the, the method feeders as I normally would rig them really um, with a short sort of four inch hook length in front of the feeder um, and after a couple of casts I felt we're not fishing in very deep water out here it's probably four and a half five foot something like yeah. that yeah a um, little bit of silt on the bottom not a great deal but I, I just had a feeling that perhaps the feeder was digging in a little bit and maybe drag it, dragging the hook bait uh, into the silt on the bottom so I swapped round went on to a method feeder but heli style again a little short hook length um, I don't worry too much sort of four or five inches is about right that's about as long as I go um, on this one I've got a size 16 hook um, it's a four and a half pound hook length uh, seven pound main line and I'll put a little bayonet a little um, still uh, uh, bayonet on this one just so I can easily air rig a boily just by pushing it in the other rod's got um, actually three quarters of a, a rubber caster on it because that's just enough to give a really slow sinking bait um, and what I like is when I've watched tension they will put a bit of underwater stuff on and you can see how they come in and they suck and blow at the, the bait on the bottom and, and the seal on them I really like to have a bait that sinks very, very slowly because I think it's, it's just got that much more chance to be sucked in with the ground bait and, and the rest of the bait and to go in. Um, and the fish don't even, they're not picking up individual baits, they're just sucking and blowing in mouthfuls of, of stuff off the bottom. And that critically balanced or slow sinking bait has got more chance of going in. Um, so that's it. And that's what's wind catching for me this morning, really. I've, I've used it here before and it works pretty well. <coughs> nothing nothing too complicated, doesn't tangle very much. Nice easy fishing really. Another just a, another point of a slow <coughs> a slow sinking bait is out here we got a lot of silkweed, so obviously the bait the feeder hits the bottom and the bait just comes down and just rests on top. The last thing you want is you know your hook bait if you've got it the other way, you just have to move that feeder and it just drags mm, the yeah, bait down it there. On the hook, no. And one thing I always do is I just soak all my plastic, hemp oil Scopex is a good one, isn't it? Mm, mm. Um, you know, anything nice and sweet or oily, it just gives me a bit of confidence whether it has any effect on the fish. But the more confidence I have catching, mm. the more fish I feel I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put on the bank. Yeah, so, a few uh, times we've been out this year, and, and this worked. You, hemp oil really you know. has worked, and it yeah. hemp oil. That's really yeah. good. The one I like for the tench, um, I've used it a lot over the years. Is um, the shellfish sense appeal. Um, I tend not to put it actually in my baits or in my ground baits, I just use it as a neat dip on the hook baits, um, just to give the hook bait that little bit more attraction really. I put a little of this in my ground bait, but instead of just dripping it in where you're gonna get areas of lots of oil, put it in the water, give it a good kind of mix up, get all those that fluid kind of dissolved within the water as much as you can, not as easy with oil because obviously it floats, but just try and get it nicely mm, mixed up and then put it in your ground bait so you get a nice even kind of mix throughout. Mm. Yeah. So talking of ground baits, what, what kind of mix are you using in your feed? Quite quite um, a soft very fine dry. Just a very fine I like red. I used yeah. to like green, but I've gone from the green <laughs> to the red after seeing how bright that green was. Yeah. I think some companies have toned that colour down because yeah. everything stands out a lot more. So this is just a very krill-based, fine ground bait. Yeah. Um, You've got quite a lot of pellet in, small pellet in there. I've got no it? pellet at all. I oh, never. I thought put, I no, see some pellet in it. No, oh, no, it's just my eyes. Yeah. No, it's just uh, just ground it's quite bait. Coarse mix. And a few maggots yeah. that obviously have got there when I've actually plugged the. The ground bait, and for, you know, I never ever put any bait in my actual ground bait, right. even when I'm catapulting it out. I want the tench to come in and kind of like think, 
oh, I can smell something, but there's no feed here. Mm. And there's my maggot, corn, boily, whatever it is, there, and they just home in on it. So. Yeah. 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 As you're saying, dunks on the red, I've gone for the green. They both work equally well this morning. Uh, you don't know if you can pick that out, but it's actually quite a lumpy mix. Of, it's a mixture of um, uh, the Dynamite's uh, green swim stim and some of their green crush pellet, which, which makes it bind a little bit better. Um, fishing about 50 yards, I suppose, here, so I want to ground bait that binds fairly well onto the feeder. So using the crush pellet, about 50-50 with the, with the normal ground bait, just makes it bind a bit. And I've just put some crushed krill in there as well. I do like like the krill powder. Do. It does work. Yeah. Um, it's worked well for me over the years. It gives me a bit of confidence. But yeah, red and green. Both red and green. Today. It could be today. pink or yellow. I yeah. mean, I really think it's it's down to what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. As long as it's a good quality ground bait and the the feed, whether you're putting some pellets in there, are good, or you cleaned your maggots off. You don't want ammonia smelling maggots. Just you know, pay attention to quality quality feed that you're putting in. I'd rather put less but good quality in than loads of poor quality. Mm. So oh, if you're going to buy some boilies, buy the best. If you're going to get your maggots, get them from a uh, you know a shop that knows how to actually keep yeah, them clean and keep them clean. And if yeah. you're going to store them in the fridge or whatever for a few days, get some maize meal and yeah. clean them off. And absolutely, yeah, yeah, whatever you know, whatever bait you use. It's I've seen so many people t you know turn up at lakes with you know huge amounts sometimes of poor quality bait and mm. wonder why they're not catching um i mean we're sponsored but to be honest we don't use a huge amount of bait do we no, really no we're not, not ground tell bait you that we do we're not we're not sponsored no. on ground bait so we have to buy our <laughs> ground bait so, <laughs> so it's as um, as possible. yeah and the maggots i don't get me maggots no. free so no. um just use them sensibly if you're gonna put them out spawn them out spot them out uh, plug it so you don't lose your maggot really because that's a cost factor and just clip up and just you just get everything nice and tight really yeah. instead of putting it everywhere and just yeah so uh, yeah, so, you I mean, don't I'd, have to. I'd say there's a lot more days like today really where you're fishing for a few bites um, rather than trying to bag up and you mm. know I think if you if you fish for four bites um, rather than you know laying out a huge amount of bait and trying to bag up then on average over the course of a season I think you'll have more good sessions yeah maybe not take advantage of that real red letter day maybe quite so much but, you know, that's debatable but yeah I think um, go easy and, and fish for I think you know, top it up as the bites come really I think you'll often by putting little and often your, your, your results will be a lot more consistent as Paul said you you might miss out on that red letter day but if you're just little and often and the fish are coming you can up your feed and have that red letter day but if you put it all in and they don't turn up you might have you know a thousand maggots out there and you've got two maggots if you've mm. only got 20 maggots out there and you attack attract one fish you've got more chance of it picking that mm. up so b uh, swan <laughs> is all right <laughs> so yeah stick. today how much did that cost me on ground bait i'd probably used a fifth of a bag of ground bait and probably half a pint of maggots yeah, that's it that's it and we've had a nice morning's fishing Put plenty we? of fish so yeah. yeah so yeah you don't need to pile it in Right, I think we have to pack up because I'm just about to get done by swans. <laughs> no, you're all right. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. But, uh, so. Yeah, that's basically what we're doing. Nothing complicated. Um, it's just about having confidence in what you're doing. And being, and, and being proactive. And being Keep proactive. working at it. Yeah. Don't, you know, the fish, it's not up to the fish to make a good day. It's up to yet the angler. If you sit there and do nothing, you're, you're just going to go away with, you know, very few fish. You work at it. Even if you don't catch, you can go home and you can feel happy that you've done everything you possibly can. That's it. Yeah, and you, chances are nine times out of ten you'll, you'll catch a few fish and do all right. I don't know, boom, swans are back. Right, I think we'll have to leave it there for now. Absolutely. Well, I think this is going to be our last fish of the morning. Absolutely pristine Frencham tench. 
Um, I actually, my, ma my rig got mangled on the last fish. So I was going for my box and actually put on a, uh, another short rig, helicopter style, but with a rubber caster instead of uh, one of the mini boilies on. And literally, just as I cast it out um, and set the bob in, it was away soon as that. It just goes to show sometimes attention really uh, homing on, the, on that little pile of ground bait. Beautiful fish, probably about five pound. Not the biggest we've had this morning, but a nice one to finish off. It's just coming up to breakfast time now, so we're going to pack up and head for home. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, we've really enjoyed making it, and hopefully you've learned something and got some tips and ideas there to take away for your own fishing. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Ta-da for now.